Norman is facing something that no kid his age, or honestly anyone, should ever have to face. He has three options available to him, and he has to decide which one to do and within a day. Number one, he escapes the farm, but everyone else will die. Number two, he tries to escape with Emma, Ray, Don, and Gilda, but all the other children will be left behind to die. And it's pretty much the same as option one, except they just get a few of them out besides just Norman. But also Emma's leg, too, will serve as a huge problem. Number three, Norman rolls over and dies. That is honestly a rough decision. Many might think, obviously choose option two, but we gotta factor in from the point of view from Emma and what she wants to do as well. I've already talked about how Emma is very naive and what Ray wants to do as well, but we gotta factor this in, okay? If they do leave, that means all of the children there are destined to die. They're not getting out of there. Security will be completely increased around the entirety of the farm, so no child will ever be able to leave that farm ever again, and so that means that they're completely fucked, and that would mean that once they do leave, all of those children there will definitely die, and Emma is very aware of this, and that is why option two is pretty much a no-go, and why Norman is like, I understand why she's like this. Option one... It's pretty much just as bad as option two. If Norman escapes, it means he's fucking everyone over. He's saving his own self to fuck every single person over. And option three means he's willing to be selfless and sacrifice his own self and allow himself to die for everybody else can live on and continue to initiate the plan. But that's still not really a good option as well because it's kind of sad how he has to face this option. Does he need to prioritize his own life? Or does he need to allow the others to live? And obviously, many would say he needs to choose the selfless option. Many would say, oh, Norman needs to choose the option to where he dies and everybody else lives on. Make the noble sacrifice. That's what many might view that as. Like, that would be a good thing to do as a character. Because, honestly, escaping would be very selfish. People would, you know, kind of nag at Norman as a character. Say, this man's a, a fucking asshole for leaving them and all that. And, you know, prioritizing his own life. Many would be very mad at him. But, honestly, I can't fault a man that's in that situation. You gotta remember, these are kids, very young kids, faced with these problems to choose between life or death, and Norman right now, he realized, even though he was accepting to die, like he was willing to die for Emma, Ray, and all of them, he, he was fine with laying down his life, he realized deep down he did want to live, and that's in common human nature that you do want to live, you don't want to die, the normal part of being a human is not wanting to die, you fear death, and that's exactly what was going on, you had to where Norman found out, like, I don't want to die, I want to live, I want to continue living on, but he's having this internal struggle within himself where he realizes if he doesn't roll over and die, everyone he cares about will die, and so I feel so bad for him as a character right now because he's faced with a situation where he doesn't really know what to do. No matter what option she chooses, he might fucking die, and, and that's the really big thing about this. Even if he tries to escape by himself, what's to say he won't die in general because of that, because he'll get captured eventually and killed off, because we don't really know what is out there beyond the wall, too. So yeah, that's a really bad option as well. So when you really take a moment to think about all of this right now, I feel so bad for him, and I wonder what he's going to try to do to, you know, destroy Mama's plans. I mean, he does say at the end of the chapter he has one day left, he'll do anything he can to destroy her entire plan completely. And if I had to assume, the only thing that you could do to destroy her plan at this time would definitely be to kill her. That's the only thing I could assume would be the way out of this right now. And actually, option two and option four, kill Isabel. What I'm getting at is, option two, it seems like it's a dark option, yes, but that's always been one of the big things we know that's probably gonna happen. There is no way all the children are gonna be making it out of there. They're probably all going to fucking die, besides Phil, of course, because that little fucker just, like, no, he, he, that man is planning everything behind the scenes. So, we, we kind of all knew that most likely all the children are going to die. Option two seems like that would be the one that's going to happen. They obviously don't want to go down that path, but that's probably what is going to happen. They're going to be forced to go down that path or they have to choose option two to escape, which then that means everybody else is going to die. And I mean, Emma can't really do nothing about it because her leg is broken, so she can't really have any say in the matter. If they have to leave them all behind, they have to leave them all behind. Emma can, you know, bitch and scream all she wants. There's nothing she can do when she really can't do anything when her leg is just completely broken. So... That's probably what's going to happen, if I had to assume. And if it's not that, it's option four. And I feel like this is finally going to push Norman over the edge. 
We know Norman has a psychotic side, especially from this chapter. It's clear as day this man's kind of fucked up in the head a little bit, just questioning, like, should he roll over and die or not, and just seeing how this man was, like, fine with letting himself die towards the end when he was just walking and all that, and he saw this face of determination on him where he's like, if I'm gonna fucking die, I'm taking her with me. That's kind of the face he was giving in this chapter, and the way it's going, it seems like he might try to do that. It seems like he might try to kill off Isabel to save everyone else. He doesn't care if he has to die, it does seem like he wants to kill her off. And I did notice in this chapter, there was a lot of things in the background that kept popping up. Medicine. Medicine kept popping up in this chapter in the background, and it was clear focused on, like it was emphasized in a lot of panels of this chapter, medicine was. And when you think of medicine, you think of stuff to help you, heal you, but also medicine can be used to kill someone as well, make them have an overdose. And in this case, I feel like that's what Norman is going to do. He's probably going to try something like that against Isabel trying to kill her because right now there's really no other option available to him. If he wants to fuck over her plan, what better way to fuck her over than to actually kill her? So I feel like that's the direction it's going. I feel like Norman is probably going to do take that option and try to kill Isabel completely off. Anyways, though, let's talk about the art style for a second. The art style is something I need to address because it is something that is clear as day to me after reading these chapters and going back to the earlier chapters and coming back to this chapter. There's a very big improvement in the art of this series, which is to be expected. I mean, when you think about a manga when they're writing a series and stuff and drawing and stuff, obviously the art will eventually improve once they get used to drawing in that certain style. That's kind of how Horikoshi was with Boku no Hero Academia, and you still see how to this day his art style continuously improves as he writes more chapters. He's a great, great artist. I've talked about him many times, and I could say the same about this writer as well for The Promised Neverland. We see how the art has constantly improved by the chapter, but it's not just the art improving, it's the way the tones of the panels are done that really show the quality in the art of The Promised Neverland. You have chapters that are very happy. Like, let's look at these scenes in this chapter with Crone. Sister Crone, when she's smiling, she seems all happy, everything seems normal. Normal. She has this regular face, it's not creepy or anything, she just has a smile on her face. And you just see how everything is bubbly and happy. But then you go into the, you know, panels with Norman, and when he's just very serious, and you see how the backgrounds are very dark. You have this atmosphere to him that really shows the desperation and the tension in these certain panels, and I noticed that the mangaka is really getting good at that, getting good at showing the tension in these panels through the way the backgrounds are drawn or the way the lines are drawn on the characters. You can see the way the art style shifts from like a serious atmosphere to more of a light-hearted atmosphere, and that's constantly happening throughout the chapters, which we see in this chapter with Sister Crone, then also then when Norman pops up, we see how he acts and how he feels with the way the art is done. So, very good stuff right there. I, I really appreciate the way the art style has shifted over the chapters since the beginning of the series, and how it's continuously improved since the very beginning. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about this week's chapter of The Promised Neverland? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Please let me know your honest thoughts in the comments below. I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi out.